Hello fellow editors and media creators. In a recent update to Adobe's Premiere Pro software, Adobe has given us the gift of hardware encoding, allowing users to encode or render projects up to four times faster now. So a project that would take an hour to encode in the past now can be as short as 15 minutes. Now, you may be thinking the same thing we were. This has to be too good to be true. Am I compromising quality for speed? A lot of you are going to be jumping into the world of hardware encoding for the very first time. So we'd like to show you this quick comparison video and allow you to formulate your own opinion on image quality and talk about a few other things such as bitrate and maybe answer a few other questions from users that are new to hardware encoding may have. This test was performed five different times on a PC holding an ASUS Strix C390 motherboard with an i7-9700 processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM, an RTX 2080 Super graphics card, and dual SSDs, one dedicated just for exports and recording. For this comparison, we decided to use the benchmark test from Red Dead Redemption 2. It's simply the same exact project encoded two different ways, software on the left and hardware on the right. There are literally a million different good points of comparison in this short video alone. But I would like to just stop and point out a few that jumped out to me, but I will be keeping my opinion to myself for the purpose of this video so you can formulate your own opinion. Our first example is in the next scene where you can see the moonlight and how it addresses the night sky in the software version and in the hardware version. Now I'm not going to say which one is my preference, but you can definitely see a difference. Here they're trying to reform the savages, make them pretty and kind. So we wanted to show this next point in comparison because it really just kind of jumps out at you. When our character comes around the ho corner here and hops onto his horse, if you look at this, it really looks like two different images here, but I promise you it's not. Same image, just coded two different ways. And if you look at this double door area here, you can see it, it really, one is really much brighter than the other. And if you look even closer, say at the panes of glass with the molding in between and if you look the the brighter image doesn't really lose doesn't really have all the pitfalls of, of the, that brightness brings it doesn't lose the contrast and the vivid image quality it, it really maintains it which is a, a you know very very desirable but if you look closer at say the double awnings hanging above the doors one of these images, at this point, I can't say which. It'll give away our preference. One of these is doesn't have all the, um, doesn't show the darks as well, obviously. So there's kind of a trade-off there. If you look at the, there's, there's some fine text between the doors, 
There's two sets of double doors actually, and it's a fine text. One you can see better than the other. I'm not going to say which. It's really a, a great a great point for argument between uh, loss of image quality and that nice bright crispness that comes out. It's really um, it it's I guess it's just it's very subtle and it's just a matter of preference. But again, there really is a difference. And when you're dealing with high quality, high motion images that you're really trying to squeeze, you're really trying to see the nook in every cranny, it matters. It, it really does matter. And for those of you that may be new to hardware encoding, let's say in the past you encode your software encode with a variable bitrate, you're going to be used to setting your target bitrate and your maximum bitrate. Now with one major difference you're going to notice with hardware encoding is that you only set the target bitrate. And I was actually speaking with somebody from Adobe support about a different issue, but he was allowing me to pick his brain and while he, I had the opportunity that I wanted to ask him some questions about hardware encoding and one of them was when I when I hardware encode, I only set a target bitrate. Does that mean that my maximum bitrate is unlimited automatically? And he said, I can't say no to that, but better terminology for it would be um, undefined. Your maximum bitrate is undefined. The software net is now working within the parameters of your hardware to take as little or as much bitrate as it needs. So you don't need to set the maximum bitrate. It does it for you. And the results are in. Our software encode on the left with a target bitrate of 35 and a max bitrate of 70 resulted in an overall bitrate of 34.0. And our hardware encode on the right with a target bitrate of 35 resulted in an overall bitrate of 36.1. And one final question we had, in the, which fits into the too good to be true category, is, is this method encoding, hardware encoding method going to destroy my hardware? Is it going to burn up my super expensive graphics card? And so we did a, uh, a different encode, which took quite a while. Normally in software encoding, it would have taken two hours. Uh, I can't remember exactly how long it took. I think it was just over 30 minutes. It was a massive, massive encode. And the whole time, our graphics card never reached over 61 degrees Celsius, which for a modern day graphics card is basically a walk in the park on a partly cloudy day. We were also told by Adobe that there were many updates in the future making lots of changes to their hardware encoding. 
So every update we find that does that, we are going to be making a new comparison video. And if you want to see them, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody else who you think may benefit. We are primarily a gaming channel, but we handle all things media, creation, and destruction. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.